It's been over a decade since Borussia Dortmund last won a Bundesliga title. They came this close this year, but unfortunately, on the last day of the season, they didn't do what was necessary, and Bayern Munich ended up taking the title yet again. So today, we're going to be trying to fix what went wrong, and within five years, try and rebuild Borussia Dortmund into not just German giants, but once again, into a European challenger. That's right, today's aim is to win the Champions League with Borussia Dortmund, as well as picking up some Bundesliga league of titles along the way. The late 90s was the last time they won a Champions League, but of course Dortmund at the minute are a team in transition. They've had notable sales leaves like Drew Bellingham going for huge money to Real Madrid, and Rafael Guerrero as well also going to Bayern Munich. I have got an updated transfer pack on here, so even though it says 2022, we're kind of starting with the players that we would have in real life in 2023. Obviously there might have been some transfers since I've recorded this, but this is as up-to-date a Dortmund squad as I could get. And just to prove that to you, we have got Felix Lemecha here who recently signed from Wolfsburg for Borussia Dortmund. Now we've got great facilities at the club and of course our aim here is going to be to buy young players in the spirit of what Dortmund like to do and sell them on for huge cash. That's going to be the plan but before we get started I'm going to ask you guys if you can keep being absolute legends and smash that like button for us. I'd greatly greatly appreciate it. It would really help with the way that these videos do. You hitting the like button means YouTube thinks the video is good and then pushes it in front of more eyes and if you're in this percentage of people that haven't yet subscribed I'd really appreciate it if you can hit that button to take us up to our next target of 25,000 subs. Recently, after last episode, we hit 20k subs, which is an absolute dream of mine, and I'll talk more about it in the future, I'm sure, but I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys right now. I won't waste too much time in this rebuild, but I really do mean it. I never thought I'd get to 20k subs, so it's awesome that we've got there, and hopefully we can keep pushing. Comment down below who you want to see rebuilt next, and with that being said, let's get started, shall we? Now, the first thing I should point out is, of course, Bellingham moved for mega money however that wasn't reflected in our budgets with Borussia Dortmund here because technically we are in 2022 within the game so I did use the pre-game editor to give us that Bellingham money I assumed if we sold him for 100 Dortmund might have say 50 mil to reinvest and then because they also signed the Metcher very recently I took the amount Dortmund had spent on him out of my budget and gave myself about 30 million pounds to play with hopefully with that that's about as accurate as possible basically I've got 30 million pounds to reinvest from the 100 million pound transfer of Drew Bellingham. But he's not the only issue in the squad. We have a few players who are aging, who are maybe relying upon a bit too much. The likes of Marco Royce and Mats Hummels, who within the game are our two best players at the club, and both of them are in their early 30s now, probably have a few years left on their career maximum. I mean, Hummels already is starting to decline massively. But we do have some great young talents to build around. The likes of Yusuf Mokoko, who I'm hoping to give a lot of game time to this year. Jamie Bino Gittens could be our next Jaden Sancho, coming from Manchester. Manchester City coming into Dortmund and hopefully taking the world by storm and also someone that's still a recognized player but still has great potential Kareem Adeyemi the German forward who we're hoping can help lead the line up top. Now with that £30 million pounds or so that we had to spend, I decided to reinvest in other areas of the team instead of directly replacing Bellingham because I think there's some in-house solutions that we can use to solve his departure. But our first incoming was Umar Soleil. He's a French centre-back, 22 years of age with potential and ability right now who comes in from Salzburg out in Austria. Just over £12 million pounds for him I think is a pretty good deal. Someone who can help the team now cover in that centre-back spot and hopefully when someone like Hummels moves on, Soleil can take his place. Place. And we did sign a midfielder, but not necessarily a Bellingham replacement per se. Like I say, I think I've looked a bit outside the box to solve the issue with Bellingham leaving, and instead we spent a similar amount of cash on Luxembourg international Leonardo Barrero, who comes in from Mainz, where he's played in the Bundesliga for a few years. He's a hard-working, tough-tackling team player. He's really going to help us in midfield by being our battler, picking the ball up, and hopefully starting attacks that way. And this is what I've decided to set up with tactically. Up front, we've got some great options. Adiemi Mokoko, but also Harla and Daniel Marlon. So I thought, why not play a two striker system? We had good wide talents as well. And I thought at Dortmund, we want to play this exciting football brand. So we are going for a 4 2 4 with a ball winning midfielder and a central midfielder on the attack duty. What this is hopefully going to do is mean we don't have to sign an out and out replacement for Bellingham. Hopefully, by only having a two man central midfield with the options we already have at the club, we won't miss Bellingham too much. And if we have a look at what our best 11 would be right now, 
It's going to be Gregor Kobel in goal. Marius Wolf at the back with Sula and Hummel. Schlotterbeck is on the bench. Ben Sibayani, who's recently been signed from Borussia Mönchengladbach, is our new left-back to replace Rafael Guerrero. We've got Sally Oschan in midfield with Emre Chan, Julian Brandt, Marco Royce, Haller and Karim Adiemi up top. So this is the side we've put together for our first season. We've got five seasons to get through, so I'll try and move quite quickly. But let's see how we get on in season one. And the answer is kind of not too bad, but also maybe the same old story for Dortmund and we'll start off with the league where once again we just miss out on the title and this is a year when we actually finished ahead of Bayern on 65 points which is a really low amount to be in second place with I feel like but we are in second place we finished four points behind the eventual title winners RB Leipzig Bayern under Thomas Tuchel definitely underperformed FC Klon there getting 65 points but I mean, it's not our best year. I feel like this could have been a season we really could have actually gone for the title. In the Champions League, we had a really tough group, in all honesty. Didn't make it through. Probably finished where people thought we may. Ended up falling in the Europa League. How far did we get there? We did make it through the knockout playoff rounds against Bodo Glimt, only just. Then we got knocked out 9-3 on aggregate against Manchester United. A very disappointing result there. And the DFB Pokal quarterfinal exit to Bayer Leverkusen. This rebuild is not going to be easy. You might have saw a team like Dortmund and assumed we'd win the Champions League straight away I do not think it's going to be like that let's see though who our best performers were this season I did ask the assistant manager to play Mokoko as often as possible and it looks like it's worked with 22 goals in a season at only the age of 18 that bodes really well for Mokoko's future and it looks like him and Adiemi might have worked very well together with Adiemi picking up 19 goals for himself and Bino Gittens having a great season mainly bench appearances only four starts but five goals four assists he is someone that's looking like he's developing very nicely the former Manchester City talent hopefully he'll grow into a top player for us and someone that I didn't mention earlier that's been really good for us is Giovanni Reyna the American who I feel like we were really hyped about a few years ago maybe fell off a radar a little bit but recently in this FM world he's done really well for us eight goals and four assists in 24 starts just over a seven average match rating a very talented player another young guy that we can really build this team around but as first years go could have been better, but at least the young talents are developing nicely. Now, though, we get stuck into the real nitty-gritty part of the rebuild. Everything that happens now is under our control. We've got £17 million to spend and £160,000 in the wage budget. Let's see who we can bring in to help us in Season 2. I'll start off with the sales, where we've actually made a fair bit of money on players that you might not have ever thought about. We had Prince Aining here, who had interest from a lot of clubs. He ended up going to Man United for £4 million that could eventually become £10 million. He was in our B team. Apparently we picked him up on a free from Ajax I didn't know too much about him I actually quite liked the look of him was willing to use him in the coming season instead of Nico Schulz but unfortunately Manu came in he wanted to leave made that clear to me so I thought you know what we'll take the cash and we'll reinvest it we've got plenty of good young talents at the club hopefully we can make do without Prince and Ing here speaking of Nico Schulz we let him go he was the backup to Benson Biney at left back but I just really didn't fancy him as a player so for £500,000 he moves on to the French divisions where he's going to finish his career at rest. Thomas Mounier was one of the highest paid players at the club yet maybe didn't have the talent that he used to have. You can see he was only played five times last year all off the bench so I thought you know what Let's get rid of him. He's gone to West Ham, 4 million. But the main thing is we get his over £150,000 of wages off of our books. Similar situation for Thorgan Hazard, someone that I rate as a player, but in this FM world, played 20 times as a sub. In the positions he'd usually play, we've already got a lot of talent. He was the easiest one to sell. Zenit came in and we've let him go to Russia for £4 million. And we didn't go too crazy on the incomings. I'm trying to sign players that are good value for money, that have good resale value, whilst also giving a chance for our young players from the academy to come into the first team as they would do at Dortmund in real life and the first player that I did bring in out of two this year was Radele Baku from Wolfsburg a player that can play midfield but likely for us is going to play right back I did a Wolfsburg save years ago in football manager and he was one of my favorite players ever so good in midfield so good in defense and we've decided to bring him in here for only 17 million pounds valued now apparently at about 50 million pounds or so can play right back as a wing back or as mentioned pretty much much anywhere that you want him but I think he's likely going to take up that starting right back slot in our defense and then we spent a bit more cash on Marcus Edwards coming in from Sporting Club de Portugal former Tottenham Youth Academy product ended up in the Portuguese division
divisions, picked up by one of the top clubs over there, did well for them, and we've decided to bring him in for 25 million. Hopefully this is a stage for him to prove himself. If he does well, great. If not, hopefully we can sell him on. Being an English player, he's obviously got a lot of talent and would attract a lot of interest. And I feel like this is a realistic Dortmund style transfer. I feel like he fits in very nicely. Resale value, ability, but also could be a very good player in the Bundesliga. Lots of flair, technical ability, and pace on that wing. He's going to help by cutting inside from that right flank, and it now leaves our best 11 looking like this. Has anything changed? Well, Edwards comes in, as does Baku in that right back slot for a whole new right side of our team. Siula, Hummels, Benson, Baini, Ozchan, Kan, Royce, Hala, and Adiemi is apparently still the other best players in the team. If we have a look at the contract situation, though, you will see Hummels, Royce, even Emre Chan coming to the end of their deals. I think I might try and extend Emre Chan's contract, but the others, it might be their last year here. But let's see how they do in their swan song season in season two. And once again, it's the same old story for our Dortmund team. We finish in third place this year, more points than last season, but Bayern beat us by only a single win with 72 points. And then ahead of them by an extra point, four points away from us is RB Leipzig. We're clearly one of the best sides in the division, but just can't take that step up to be the best side in the nation we finish on 69 points a third place finish champions league we got knocked out in the group stage doesn't look like we even had a europa league run so how bad were we really bad actually didn't even win a single match i feel like if next season doesn't start well we could potentially be up for the sack if you have a look we've only got a c plus rating it looks like our financial management is maybe helping us out but this is not going well so far not too much to note at all knocked out in the pokal quarter final average match ratings wise the only thing we can really take from this is makoko and adiemi are scoring goals which is always good to see and um, geo reina also doing well the same with bino gittins this year but um, yeah, I think the less we say about this season, maybe the better. I think we really need to rethink our strategy here. We've got £40 million to spend, £300,000 in the wage budget. To let you know, Emre Chan, Hummels and Royce aren't signing on for any more seasons. So they're all leaving on a free deal. And maybe it's kind of a good thing. Maybe we can start a new era at the club. Let's see how we go in the season three transfer window. Two young players were once again sold on for big money. Players that hadn't made their real impact on the first team just yet. Filippo Mane, who I was looking at to promote into the first team next season. He decided he wanted to leave. Man City came in for nearly £10 million. And it's hard to reject £10 million for a player who's never played for you. As good as he looks like he might be, he wanted to go. We took the money and we reinvested it. And the same goes for young forward Julian Rykoff, who I always loving football manager again would have been one of my striking options after this season you'll see why with some of the transfers we've made but Premier League interest was enough for him to want to leave 8 million pounds up front potential to be 12 million hopefully this is one that we won't regret but that's 20 million pounds nearly from two players who have never even set foot on the pitch for us combined with Royce Hummels and Chan leaving and leaving a lot of wage budget to spend we did have money to reinvest but not without letting a few other players go Ryerson here the right back who we bought in from Union Berlin didn't play too much last year so I've sold him on for a slight profit on what we paid for him to FC Köln. And with all that cash, we were able to really start a new era at Dortmund here. We started by getting a new backup right back behind Rodele Baku, and we have signed Kevin Alvarez, a Mexican 25-year-old coming in from Club America. Hopefully he'll do well for us. He's been great over there. Lots of ability, only expecting to be a squad player, and hopefully he'll challenge Baku in that right back spot, and it'll be healthy competition for them both. Rooney Baji comes in as another option on the wing, a perfect Borussia Dortmund style transfer picking up a player outside of the top five divisions who's been doing well a youngster with lots of potential lots of ability already at the age of 18 comes in for seven and a half million potential to be eight we might sell him on for profit or he'll become a real good player for us and I'm hoping it will be that second one and because we lost Julian Rykoff as our young up-and-coming striker I decided to sign Nelson Viper here coming in from Mines, where he had a really good season for their second team only three million pounds or so looks like a good talented option could be one of our strikers options down the line but for now he's just someone that we can bring in and maybe sell on for a profit one day but our most expensive signings of the season were an improvement at left back some competition for Benson Biani here a 23 year old by the name of Miguel Gutierrez he comes in from Girona he'd originally played for Real Madrid last season he was brilliant in the second division for Girona and we've paid just under 20 mil for him looks like a phenomenal left back with potential so young as well and hopefully will become a top draw player under our management and then we have stacked out our midfield with a 
real talent. Emre Chan was a great player for us, a great leader as well. He's gone, so we've had to replace him. And we have gone for Kefren Turam, who joins us from Nice out in the French divisions after two great seasons there. £28 million is the fee, a physical specimen, six foot four. I'm sure he'll be a France international if he plays well here. Good on the ball technically, good off the ball in terms of what he offers defensively too. Lots of good player traits and someone that I think is going to step straight in to our best 11. And speaking of our best 11, let's see how it's looking now. If we had all players available, it would be Gregor Kobel in goal with Baku, Sula, Schlotterbeck and Miguel Gutierrez. A much better defence, I think, than what we inherited originally. Sally Oschan, he's quietly been doing well as that ball winning midfielder. You'll see we have adjusted the tactic this year to have someone sitting a little deeper. Hopefully that gives Turam a bit more cover and a bit more range here to get into these kind of areas without having to worry too much about who's covering behind him. Marcus Edwards, Bran, Adiemi and Makoko. We've got some great players on the bench too. Reina, Gittens, Harla, Soleil, Malin. We have got some great talent here and hopefully it can pay off in season three. I feel like this is the best team we've had so far. Lots of good young players in there as well. Fingers crossed season three goes a little bit better than our other two. And thank God it's actually gone the way we wanted, although it looks like it might have been a hearts-in-mouth season once again for Borussia Dortmund fans. We have won the DFB Pokal, which is obviously a huge result. Great to win that, but the league, we won it with joint points with Bayern, beating them by a goal difference. In the Champions League, we had a big clash against Benfica, winning an 8-7 in an all-timer Champions League classic, I think. Losing 7-4 away from home, but a 4-0 advantage at home gave us that 8-7 win. A crazy night that must have been. Round of 16, we played Real Madrid, got knocked out 5-2 on aggregate, kind of to be expected. I don't think the Champions League is where this club is at just yet, but in terms of top performers, we have players that could definitely perform on the biggest stages now. We've Adiemi and Makoko getting 70 goals between them this season. Makoko developing into an unreal player for us now. And Adiemi is amazing with that 19 acceleration, 19 pace. No one can keep up with him. Kefren Turan was brilliant, but Jamie Bino Gittens is the man that's really had a breakout season. A real tough to deal with, physical prospect, good on the ball, great flair and determination. Is actually pretty good when it comes to the finishing side of the game too and can pass well. He had a great year this year. 10 assists in the league, free goals and 26 starts. A real breakout year for Bino Gittens. Clearly, without the likes of Marco Royce here, he got the game time he needed to really shine. And now we finally have the first bits of silverware in the bag. We beat Freiburg in the final of the Pokal with a 2-0 win. I think Mokoko got both goals from what I checked earlier. But yes, two trophies in the bag, the Pokal and also the Bundesliga. Hopefully we can win a few more by the end of this rebuild. We've got two more years to go. If you are enjoying, smash the like button and let's see who we bring in in season four now. Starting off with the outgoings, one of the weirder transfers you'll see here, Sebastian Harler going out to Watford in the Premier League for 4.7 mil. Never really got back into our team. Obviously really commendable everything he's been through in real life. But as far as the FM world goes, his time was up at Dortmund. We decided it was time to move him on and off he goes and we get a few million pounds for him. Julian Duranville here was a player I had a lot of hope for at the start of this rebuild. Someone with a lot of potential but was always just behind some of the players in the pecking order so never really got a chance. We loaned him out to Greece where he developed well but it was not looking good for him in terms of getting first team appearances here. So the Belgian has moved on. We got £6 million for him. He goes to FC Colm where I'm sure he'll be great but it wasn't to be here. We lose a bit of money on him but it is what it is. I feel like we reinvested it well. And Daniel Marlon has also left to join Stade de Rem. He was upset. Didn't want to extend his contract which only had a year left on it. You can see why he was upset set, not getting any game time at all at the club, clearly not good enough. We get £8 million for him, but with him and Harla gone, it only left Mokoko and Adeyemi as our two striking options, behind some real young players that maybe weren't there yet. So to increase our depth up front, we've signed Follerin Balogun here from Arsenal on a free duel. He was let go by them, comes in as like our fourth choice striker. I think he'll be good for us, he won't play very often, and we can sell him on for profit if needs be. We got him for free, so it's not the worst deal in the world. And we also got a real bargain, I think, on Henry Enrique Araujo here, coming in from Benfica, where he scored a few goals against us, I'm pretty sure, in that 8-7 thriller. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody scored on the pitch that day. But he's been doing well for them, appearing off the bench most of the time, but scoring when called upon. £13 million is what we pay for a good striker. Comes in as our third option, as you can see here up front, but hopefully has the ability to really push Adiemi and Makoko to the highest limits. And when they're not playing, Araujo here will hopefully be good enough he can just step in and we won't notice that them two aren't playing. Some extra depth at centre-back was necessary, 
Gary Eiffel. So we've decided to bring in Ruben Polito here on a free deal. 24 years of age, coming in from Huesca out in the second division, where he's been through this whole simulation, doing very well for them. Clearly better than the second division. His contract expired, so we bought him in. Six foot, not very strong, but as far as centre-backs go, he's a player that's got a hard tackle on him, and he comes in as a decent option at the back. But for the bargain of the summer... I think we have got that on lock. Signing Diogo Costa from Porto. What are you thinking? 50, 60, 70 million pounds for one of the best goalkeepers, one of the best young goalkeepers in the world? No. The Portuguese international has signed for us for only 25 million, potentially to be 27. He was transfer listed at Porto. No idea what's happened then. He's decided he wanted to move to Dortmund. We paid the money. He's been amazing for them. I think he's going to be the difference now that takes us to another level. If you look at the defence with him behind it, it looks so strong. And this is our best team now. Diogo Costa in goal, Baku, Sula, Schlotterbeck, Gutierrez, Chan Turam, Giovanni Reina, Bran Adiemi, and Makoko with some great great players on the bench now. Julian Brandt has decided he's going to leave at the end of the season when his contract is up. Nothing we can really do about that, but hopefully we've got some good players like Bino Gittens ready to step in. But for our penultimate season, let's see how he can do in the Bundesliga and hopefully launch a bit more of a challenge on the European front. And when I said bit more of a challenge, I did not think we'd go as far as winning the competition. We've actually won the quadruple this year. Let's start off the German Super Cup. We did win that. We beat Bayern 2-0 to take that trophy home. The Pokal, we played Union in Berlin and won 1-0 on that final game there. The league we won with 81 points, five points more than Bayern for once they weren't breathing exactly Dan on next for once. Herford doing very well getting the third spot there. And then the Champions League where we win 5-2 on that Champions League final. We've still got another season yet, but I'd be remiss if we didn't show you the goals from this last game. Also, it looked like we were very lucky to get this far because we lost to Bayer Leverkusen 6-2 on the final day of the Bundesliga season. Lost to Real Madrid and only beat them in penalties. Also knocking out Man City on the way. Leipzig we knocked out too and Juventus in a 7-0 victory there very very impressive but let's watch the goals from the Liverpool Dortmund game the Jurgen Klopp derby if we want to call it that like I say another season after this yet so don't go anywhere looks like we really outperformed XG so our strikers must have been on the ball Mokoko getting a Champions League final hat trick by the looks of it a 10 rating and a player of a match award let's check out these goals five minutes in Makoko breaks forward behind that Liverpool defence he goes alone Fred through Adiemi and them two are like this at the minute they've been playing together for four years at this point formed a great strike partnership but in the 33rd minute Mohamed Salah snuck it past Diogo Costa in the net to make it 1-1 but we weren't done there Sally Chan finding Makoko to Julian Brandt who finds Makoko right through the back of the defence in what would have been his final game for the club as well Julian Brandt has got the assist to give Makoko that goal which he takes brilliantly ran the goalkeeper giving us a 2-1 advantage in a 52nd minute we have Makoko sweeping up the ball finds Gio Reyna and the American threads it back to Makoko who scores from what looked to be an offside position but clearly not we take the 3-1 advantage into the 54th minute and we look to make it 4-1 very soon after with Turam playing through Makoko for the hat trick on the 50 minute mark and he chips the goalkeeper looks like it took a deflection but Allison could do nothing about that 4-1 at this point. We looked like we were home and dry. Then in the 70th minute, we've decided to capitalise on it once more. Julian Brandt going alone in his final game for the club, scoring a goal, assisting one, and it didn't matter what happened after that, even when Liverpool scored here through Noah Okafor, is it? Yes, he's going to slot it in. No, Diogo Costa, Benson Biney. How's it not gone in? What the hell is that? No wonder we replaced Benson Biney there. Benjamin Sesko ends up scoring from a terrible mistake. But look, we're not going to be too bothered about that. We have got a 5-2 win against Liverpool there, winning the Champions League. The best year we've had by far. Four trophies, an incredible season. And Mokoko and Adiemi, they're the men we need to thank. But Bino Gittens doing great, as did Araujo, getting 19 goals for us, mainly off the bench as well. So fair play to him. He's done really well for us there. So we've got one season left. You can see we're improving the facilities. The staff situation is looking amazing as well we've got some great players in the dev center this guy in particular looking forward to breaking into the first team pre-drag babich here but we've got one more year left and we have got plenty of cash to spend with 60 million and about 500 grand in the wage budget let's see what we can do in year number five really at this point we're just trying to find the icing on top of the cake after six trophies already anything would be good but starting with our sales we've let Balogun go here for 18 million a great bit of business from us bring him for free sell him on for a huge profit and bring a younger player through from the academy to replace him in that starting lineup they can take his place in the squad whilst we make some easy cash off of him and the same goes for Ruben Polido who we bought in from a free last season 
season, played a few times, and we sell on for 10 million to Benfica. Rami Bensambaini, his last act in a Borussia Dortmund shirt, was given the ball away in that Champions League final to Sesco. As good as he is, it was time to move him on. He had a year left on his deal. Porto were interested, so he's gone for 12 mil. Julian Brandt, we mentioned, was leaving. He's gone on a free to join Wolfsburg, and best of luck to him there. He's done a lot for us in a Dortmund shirt, and we're very happy with his contribution. And finally, another transfer to Benfica, Marcus Edwards, who we got a little bit of a profit on, had him for a few years, didn't quite work out in terms of becoming a regular starter, only started one match in the Bundesliga last season, 12 sub appearances, decided it was probably best to let him go and let Rooney Bargy take the spotlight in his position. And we didn't need to sign too many players at all. As mentioned, we could develop a lot of young talent from our own academy, which we've promoted into the first team, but we needed a backup goalkeeper now that Gregor Kobel has left. He left on a free deal, by the way. So we've decided to pick up Inaki Pena here from Barcelona, available on the transfer list, 3.8 mil for our backup goalie behind Diogo Costa. Benson Baini's replacement to play alongside Miguel Gutierrez at left back is going to be this man, Jaden Oosterwold, a Dutch under-21 international who's okay, only expecting to be starting every now and then. 25 years of age, good talent coming in from Fenerbahce where he was their star player and amazing for them last year. And we massively improve at centre-back. Polido goes out the door and in comes Goncalo Ignacio, a Portuguese 24-year-old playing in front of his national team goalkeeper. 23 appearances for the national team already. You might think we signed him from Sporting Club de Portugal. No, he played there for a few years, moved to Real. They clearly didn't fancy him too much and have decided to sell him on the next season for 35 mil. And I think he's a great bit of business for us. I think we've been really productive in the transfer market in this rebuild and it's now left our best team looking something like this. It's going to be Diogo Costa in goal, who's been with us for a year now and is already a Champions League winner. Radele Baku, who's became amazing at fullback at 28 years of age. Still a German core in this squad with him, Sula and Schotterbeck all being German internationals at the back for us. Sally Ozchan and Turam are our midfielders with Reina, Bino Gittens, who's became really good over the course of this rebuild, Adiemi and Mokoko. These front four of Reina, Gittens, Adiemi and Mokoko have been exceptional. You can see we promoted the likes of Nelson Viper here to be our Balogun replacement as that backup fourth choice striker behind Arojo, Adiemi and Mokoko. And overall, our team is ready for a final season. Could potentially use some more depth here, but we've got so many players in the dev center that I can promote now to help this first team out. But as far as the first 11 goes, we are sorted. Let's see if we can do anything special in season five. And nothing was ever really going to top what happened to his last season, but this season came pretty close. I mean, we won the Bundesliga by a huge margin this year, 10 points and 14 points ahead of FC Bayern with a 78 point title win. We won the Pokal yet again for their third year in a row, beating Munch and Gladbach. The German Super Cup, we did lose to Bayern, but we don't need to cry any tears because we did win the UEFA Super Cup, beating Europa League winners Nice. 4-0 in that competition there. Quarterfinal exit to Bayern in the Champions League would be pretty upsetting for any Dortmund fan. It was in penalties though. Nelson Viper scoring the goal against Mönchengladbach in the Pokal final is a great turnout for a player that we picked up for a few million who's done great for us when called upon. But what I love to see in the semi-final against FC Köln here, we won 6-2 and Duranville actually scored the two goals for Köln and he's a former player of ours, done really well so far out at FC Köln by the looks of it. So congratulations to him. Congratulations to us and Dortmund manager because our rebuild is complete. Three Bundesliga titles, three Pokals, a few cups outside of that, and a Champions League win. Our training facilities, our youth facilities, our junior coaching and youth recruitment are maxed out. We have a max reputation. We've got players that are already icons at the club at only the age of 22 who are going to go on to more. Marco Royce, what's he up to? He fully retired. He didn't take any kind of management job. Adiemi, Makoko, they're guaranteed to be legends by the end of this, I'm sure. We have had a fantastic rebuild here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Smash the like button if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.